this is being recorded okay uh, so now it's being recorded uh, what what does it mean we will have a record of the lectures somewhere saved and then i can just provide the link for you if i can find out where <laughs> where does it say because for now i don't know uh, if it's going to be on my computer is available if it's going to be on cloud I have to just somehow give you the link but uh, as I know we have really limited amount of just place or space to keep them so we have to transfer them somewhere I've decided to transfer all of these videos to the YouTube uh, channel which is free for us then we will uh, uh, I will give you the link okay uh, as far as the lectures, I think we should be okay. Everything is going to be exactly the same way. Uh, I mean, the group works, the discussion, uh, questions, and everything is going to be the same way. It's just really making the classes through this Zoom. And as, uh, as of now, I love it because it's saving a lot of time. We don't have to look for the parking. We don't have to just walk all the way down the hill to make the class and run to the next class. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work for all of us. And uh, even if you, uh, for me personally, I was sitting on this chair for 17 hours yesterday to just make the classes ready because I teach in different campuses and all of them are the same. Even though I was just really from the first place using the blackboard constantly, everything was e-copy. It was just really making the lectures ready. And it's just a lot of work but don't worry we will provide everything to make it easy we just go we, we we slow down okay so we slow down and then you can catch up with all all of the other courses the only issue is just really the test okay so otherwise making classes in this way seems exactly same way you are in the class you can unmute yourself you can have interaction even we can do the group works here right so even i can just give you extra time than the class and sit with I mean, just sit with you and just try the group works with you, and then you you can I can break it the class to the groups and then just ask you to continue the group works. So we have a lot of interaction here, uh, uh, and we are just relaxing here in, at home. So this is this is not any problem. Again, it just the only thing is the exams, which as of now I don't have really certain solution for that. So I'm not going to talk about it. I know you have a test next week and I'm not going to change it, but I don't know how do I make the test, okay? So, so let's just, whenever I found what to do, then I will let you know, is that fine? I was going to go to the uh, Blackboard discussion. I think I have had some questions which I need to answer. So this is not your class, right? 2250 let's just go to see what is it you know those those exit ticket now is more more and more required for me because that's just uh, that's just really the feedback okay so we don't meet each other we don't have really access to anything to know what's going on on the campus okay so i we have received many many emails i'm not going to talk about any problems that is there it is there okay so let's not worry about that this is the time we want to use for lectures unfortunately i'm not available right before the class for all of my classes i made uh, half an hour earlier to answer the questions or just to make the office hours so whatever you want to call it for your class it's just the other class ends exactly at uh, 1250 so I'm not available before the class but I will continue this zoom after the class time to answer the questions okay so that's just really to answer your questions it's like the office hours it will be always available at least half an hour after the class staying on the zoom and make sure you don't have any other questions okay uh, I'm checking what's going on on this discussion board for the week the week that we have finished it so i'm just looking for if the, if there is anything on clear so you are finding uh, the max and mean and i have a few questions left and absolute max and mean uh, with the office hours okay uh, uh, think tan question do you have the access to mic to speak or no can you just unmute yourself or you want to ask in the office hours. It's fine if you want to ask office hours, okay? 
Uh, okay, so you're fine. And then I will go to the next person in this discussion board. Uh, that is Kong. Uh, small thing I'm still left wondering about we why we remove the square root for the distance formula when you're using the Lagrange multiplier. So this is just uh, one of the question uh, because is uh, really when you are writing the distance. Uh, where is my pen? Do you know? Where do I change my pens? No, it's here. Okay. Uh, so when I'm writing the distance formula, uh, it was originally write x minus x naught uh, to the second plus y minus y naught to the second, okay? So this means uh, you have to get the derivative of this function. And then uh, for now, it's just derivative of this function in terms of the x, derivative of this function in terms of y, and set it equals zero. So then when you have a square root of u, and you want to take the derivative, so that is just the derivative of inside two square root of u, then you want to set it equal zero. So when you just set this fraction equal zero, you never worry about what's in your denominator, right? So the top of the fraction must be zero to make the, the, the fraction to be zero. So that's why we don't care about uh, what that the square root is because the critical values for this square root of u basically is just the same as when you have done this, no, no square root and it's just really derivative of inside. So that's what you said we call zero. So it's just really what all about inside. So then we can drop it or that, that means this extreme value stays the same of, for these two functions. This is for Conlon question. And, uh, I have John. Uh, John, what's just really your main thing? Because when you say types of problem, yes, there are several types of problem here in this section, okay? So, uh, John, are you here or no? John? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, so, the, the, that's, that's a good question because you see, when, when we say the, finding the max and mean, uh, was uh, one of them is just really a local max and mean, right? So what is the local max and mean? Local max and mean is just the, uh, the d-testing, right? So if you have uh, set the derivatives equal zero and then uh, d-tested whether it's positive, negative, so it's just really max and mean or saddle point, that's, not, that's number type one of the problem. Type two of the problem is just really absolute max and mean, but to find the absolute max and mean, there are two types. So either I have constraint function, or so I will say with the constraint function or without the constraint function. So if there is no constraint function, uh, uh, so to, to, find the, to find the absolute max and mean, you set the derivatives equal zero, and then you take care of the boundary. So this is a step number one. And then step number two, uh, take care of the boundary. And then step number three, you just say whichever is bigger, whichever, uh, whichever is smaller, okay? And that's just uh, uh, list the numbers, right? And then uh, with the constraint function, with the constraint function, I, uh, need to maximize this one. So with the constraint function, I have two options. I can just do it with the Lagrange multiplier, or I can do it in, in 11.7. I will call it traditional method or plug-in method. It's just maybe that's a better word for that. Plug-in plug method. So uh, for Lagrange multiplier, it's just making gradient vector, lambda gradient vector of the G. For plug-in method, it's always you, uh, Mm, intersect uh, constraint equation into uh, main equation, okay? So you are right, there are many types. Uh, do I have any specific question to answer right now, John, about this many types? No, not specifically. I, I was just looking for 
like uh, when you were going to post the um, the solutions for the practice midterm so I that we it, could i made it very last last minute of last night at 2 a.m <laughs> okay so now you oh. have it <laughs> okay i appreciate it thank you <laughs> no worries any other question okay so let's just say if i have anything left over here uh, i think i have one more from omar that was very brand new uh how to calculate the volume under the 3d surface okay so this is what we we, we will practice today more so this is just brand new and that's just uh, what we haven't finished it we need to practice more today so uh, what it is, uh, I have, I don't remember where did I stop. If someone can help me to remember where did I stop. Did we finish 15.1? If you write on chat room, I don't see it. I have to somehow. Um, I don't think we had finished 15.1 yet. We were just going through some examples. Can you remind me which example was the last one? Um, we had just talked about um, double integrals and how it doesn't matter if you do dy dx or dx dy first. And then we did one example in class of the, um, it was y cubed e to the negative 2x. That was the example we did in class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's just say uh, this is the, an, another example. Okay, so let's just start from this example. And uh, I will Okay, let me close the door because at the same one, sometimes somebody else is teaching. We all have the same problem, right? So we have the kids at home and everyone is working from home. So it's completely noisy everywhere. Okay. Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to try just really uh, practice simple examples. So practice very simple examples. So this is uh, polynomials. When I call simple, I mean really polynomials because polynomials are the simplest one to integrate. So uh, to know how is the order of integration or what does this iterated integral mean uh, is just really where you do the integration by order, okay? So just to remind you the concept when you, you're just doing the integration, you can do it with respect to the y and then with respect to the x, you can do it with respect to x and then with respect to the y. Okay, so the order does not matter. We do whatever is easier. Uh, so this is going to be uh, the first one that you do, right? So whatever is inside based on the order of operation is just really the first one that you try and then the, the, the outside is just the next one. I'll do uh, one example and then I, I move on to the, uh, to the, I will say the, the challenging problem. Uh, so then uh, the rectangular region, which the order does not matter. So I can start from zero to one and then start from negative one to the two, then you have X, Y minus Y squared, and then you have a DX, DY, okay? So, I have to keep the outside exactly the same. So this is partial differentiate, sorry, partial integration in terms of the X. So if you are doing the partial integration in terms of the X, so means your Y is a constant. Then the Y is a constant. So the, that means uh, you're having Y as a constant. You're just integrating the X, which is going to be X squared divided by two. You're having Y as a constant. You are integrating only one, which is the X. And then it's really something that we have done for partial differentiation, okay? So this is partial integration, which you fix whatever you are not doing, right? So whatever you are not doing, you just, you, you just fix it, okay? And then I have uh, to take care of the values that I have. 
so then x equals 1, x equals 2 is just the numbers that you want to plug in. So if you have y divided by 2, x is uh, 2. And then minus uh, y to the second. And then x equals 2. And then this is this is the, the, the top limit and minus the lower limit is y divided by 2, then x equals 1. Uh, x equals 1 to the second. And then I have minus y to the second and then x equals 1. Okay, so these are the values that I just need to plug in. And then the next term is just really dy. Okay, that gives me what? This 2 by this 2 simplify is just 2y minus 2y square minus y divided by 2 minus minus is plus y square dy. Okay, so this is fine. Then you have uh, what do you have is really simple integration in calculus one, right? So y square divided by 2 minus 2 y cubed divided by 3 plus minus half is a constant. And y is y squared divided by 2, y cubed divided by 3. So this is just really simple integration or single integration that we, we, we have learned in calculus 1 after we take care of the inside, right? So that's after taking care of the inside, it's just really single variable of y left. And then if I plug in 0, everything is going to be 0. So then I just need to plug in 1 square half, 2 thirds of 1 minus half times uh, half times uh, half is just one fourth of one plus one third and then whatever okay so you get the number so uh, the main thing that i need to remember the result of the, the result of this integration is going to be always a constant a number huh? so there is no way to you get the uh, uh, what is x or y at the end uh, does it make sense? Do you have any question for this uh, basic problems? Is there any question for this? For basic? um the two uh the two y when you integrate it, why is it y squared all over two? Shouldn't it just be y squared since oh, the did two I mess up? Out? Okay, so two by two cancel out. That's yeah. Thank you. Anything else? No? Okay. And this is an example. Uh, just one more time. That was the Fubini's theorem that led us to switch the order of integration. So if you have dy dx, you can make it dx dy. So you can just change the order of integration. But you need to remember whatever is with the y, this is just the limits of the y. And then uh, whatever is with the with the x is the, the limits of the x, okay? So if you have decided to make the x to be the first one or to be inside, so then you have to move it with the limits, okay? So you can't move it just really the dx dy. It's just really entire uh, with the, the limits of integration, okay? So don't forget to move your limits of integration. Uh, have... Did we try this example or no? <clears throat> no? Anyone? No, we haven't. Okay. Uh, which one is negative one? 10 times is, is it negative one? What is negative one? You mean the answer is negative one? No, it was just like when you plugged in, it was two to negative one, you plugged in regular one. Two to the negative one. Negative one to the two. I, for the end point, for the end points of the example we just did, we were supposed to plug in negative one and two, and then you plugged in two and then just one, not negative one. Okay. Does it change the but problem? It doesn't, 
Um, it just changes the sign for that last Y. It should okay, be negative, so, I believe. Yeah. So this is this is negative one. This is negative one, but it doesn't change here. So it does change. Thank you. Sorry, when you type it, uh, if I maximize the, the, the page, I don't see your, your chat, okay? So I do not see your chat. If you have anything to add, it's just, it's, it would be helpful to just unmute it, okay? So after a while, I will check your uh, uh, chat, but uh, as you see right now, it's just entire uh, or maximum the, the page, so then I don't see your, your chat, okay? So now let's just practice this one. Uh, so this is, this is the, the, the limits of integration. So this, these are limits of integration. And then uh, the notation, as I said last time, is just really helping us if we don't like to write entire notation of uh, two-dimensional region is uh, x's between one and two, uh, x's is between one and two, and then y is between uh, what is it? Zero to pi. Okay. So instead of writing this this much, we just say okay. The first one is just the limits for the x, and then the second one is just the the, the limits for the y. Huh? So this is for the y. This is for the y. So then uh, that that means the region of integration or the limits of x is between one to two, and the y is between zero to pi. Uh, so then uh, we need to decide which one is easier to do right now. So if you look in this problem, is it easier to do in terms of y first or in terms of x first? Mm. If you do it in terms of y, uh, if you do it in terms of the uh, y, you have product of two functions, right? So this is product of two functions in terms of the y. So that means you have to do integration by parts, which, which we said in this course, we don't like to do that much techniques of integration. But if you do it with respect to the x, it's just really x, the variable, and everything is everything else is constant. So it seems if you just make this one to be, uh, what is it, derivative, If this is just really uh, the derivative of, uh, sorry, differentiate of x and then y, it will be easier, right? Because this function is a lot easier to integrate in terms of the x than y, because for the y, we have to do the two variables one, okay? So it's the limits of integration. I just make it to be like this. This is going to be for the x and the outside is going to be for the y. So limits of integration for the x is just the first numbers, which is from one to two. Limits of integration for the y is just the second one, and that was from zero to pi. So that was from zero to pi. So this is just the problem that we need to solve as we decided to do the dx. It's possible to do dy first, but it's just really longer, okay? Uh, so then, if I go here, I have the outside is just the last term. I need to take care of the inside first. So this is going to be y sine, oopsie. I'm, I'm differentiating in terms of the x. So, I'm sorry, I'm integrating in terms of x. So then y is a constant. So the, the integration of uh, sine is a cosine. And then uh, just to remind you the formula from the uh, calculus says you have cosine, uh, for now is the sine. So if you have a sine of a constant x dx is minus cosine of that constant divided by the constant, okay? For me, it's going to be minus, I don't know why I have this x over here. So it's going to be a minus cosine so it's going to be a minus cosine, but I need to divide it by the constant. I kept the y to be outside. This is the y to be outside because that's just really constant. And then uh, since I'm there string in terms of the x, since I'm doing in terms of x, as you see, this, uh, what is it? Y is going to be a constant. So I just bring the y down 
and then plugging the one to the two. This is just my term for the x. Is there any question for this part? Fine. And uh, this is nice because this y by this y cancel out. I have minus cosine of x, y. And uh, I just need to plug in the values of two and one. So let's say this is going to be for the x, huh? Cosine of uh, x is two. I'm just writing x is two, x is one. So uh, this is x equals two times y and minus minus is plus so this is cosine of and that's just one i don't need to write it and then it is just the y and then i integrate this one in terms of the the y in x term so again one more time if i have cosine of a constant x so that would be uh, plus sine of that thing exactly divided by constant so that is minus sine of 2y divided by the constant. And then this is sine of the y. Then you need to plug in the values, which gives you minus sine of 2 pi divided by 2 plus sine of the pi. It seems everything is 0. Huh? So then I have minus minus, which is plus sine of zero, and that is divided by two minus sine of zero. And that's, as I said, seems to be everything equal zero. So the answer is zero. So then again, uh, is it possible to try by one to dx first and then zero to pi y sine of x y next means switch the order of integration from dx dy to dy dx it's possible but since this is a product of two functions then you have to do integration by parts which we don't like to do that much okay any question for this again if you write it in that chat part i have to minimize to see your chat nothing huh yes i have something okay <coughs> move on move on any question Is there any question? No? No one? Okay. So this is just an example. And uh, as I just explained there, this is really up to you to decide uh, which order is better to do. So we are looking for the simplest one, okay? So we can just do it this much simple, much, much simpler if you do it this direction or if you want to switch it and then you have to do integration by both. So that's just up to you and they are equal, okay? So either one is fine, but the, they are just, the, it's just really the, the matter of which one is, is faster, easier, no techniques, it's just really use of situation enough, okay? Uh, the next example, uh, if you don't have any question, the next example is a nice one because I, I, it reminds you many things that you have learned through the semester for graphing. Uh, so it says find the volume. When it says find the volume means uh, the concept, means what we, what we define as a double integration. So that is just going to be uh, always uh, double integration of something, okay? So when you have a surface, which is the top, and then you have a base, uh, which is in, x y plane uh, so that base that base is the region of integration and that top is just whatever you integrating okay so that's your integrand whatever is the uh, graph or the roof or the top of the solid is going to be the integrand 
and then whatever is just the base on the exploit plane is going to be the region of integration. So it seems I need to really have two different graphs. One is two dimensional graph because I needed to set the limits of integration. And then one more thing, integration. And then I need a three dimensional graph. Why? Because to find what is my integrand. Okay, so to find the integrand or inside the integral or what is supposed to integrate over is just really your three dimension graph. So that's just uh, the, the roof or the top of your solid, okay? Uh, for this problem, as we see, there are really one, oops. Uh, this is just one solid or surface. This is planes and that's just three coordinate planes, okay? I'm not worried usually about the coordinate planes when I'm graphing because when you are having the graph right over here, okay? Uh, Basically, this is just really your, your coordinate plane. So this, this is coordinate plane, this is coordinate plane. So you do have your coordinate planes. So you are not worried about your coordinate planes. And if I just have x equals two, the, again, these are the, 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 the things that we have practiced in all these two chapters to get to this here and to, practice, to, to use them, okay? So if you have had uh, just in any of the homework, any of the problem, you skip the graphing, or you say, I have hard time to graph, now there is no way to skip it. So as you see, this is just going to be the plane of uh, x equals two. And then I will make the plane of uh, y equals two somewhere here. Okay, so this is the plane of y equals two. And then uh, as you see the, uh, what is it? The, the main thing that is the top of the graph or your integrand uh, is x squared plus two y squared plus z equals 16. I don't know how to graph it. I don't remember, that's fine. I need to go by uh, traces to see how does it look like, okay? So if you do not remember how to graph, go by traces. Set x equals zero, set y equals zero, and set the z equals zero to see what do you get. So for example, if I set x equals zero, I will get a, a parabola, which is upside down. And then in xz plane, I will get a parabola, which is upside down. Okay. And then that the highest point is 16. I mean, the vertex is 16. So then I have 16 to y squared. And it seems if I said y equals zero, uh, oopsie, why no one say anything? So, uh, I have said x equals zero, so it's two y squared. Mm -hmm. And z equals zero is x squared is the other one that I have made. And then z equals uh, zero was, uh, mm, what is it? 16 minus x squared minus two y squared equals zero. So is x squared plus two y squared equals 16. Divide by 16, divide by 16, divide by 16. So x squared divided by 16 plus, uh, y squared divided by eight equals one. Okay, so in x direction, I have to go four unit. In y direction, I have to go square root of eight unit or two rat two, okay? So then uh, this is just almost like a, a ellipse. Okay, uh, so it seems the, there is a part of the, uh, the part of the graph, uh, that is just really sliced right over here, which you see the planes are right over here. So I just make the uh, highlight there for the plane. So let's just say, uh, this is a blue one for this part. 
okay and then i just make the green one for this wall okay and then the top of your graph i make it pink so the top of your graph is just really this part okay so this is the top of your graph uh, it seems the uh, what is it coordinate plane coordinate planes means you have to stop it you don't go to the negative direction so then i'm going to borrow my pen sorry my eraser and just really erase oopsie it's erased too much can i erase no okay so i'm going to just really say uh, that doesn't go to the negative piece right so one more time because it's just coordinate plane so let's just really say this is a blue one and that gives you here a stopping point which is only the positive and stopping on the coordinate plane and then if i make it green so if this is two i stop here okay i want to just get the value or the volume of this piece okay this piece so what's the region of integration two-dimensional graph it seems x is between 0 to 2 y is between 0 to 2 so this is just really the square thing that we see in the, the base in xy plane so this is just the square that i see in the xy plane okay so that's the limits of integration as i said two-dimensional graph is for limits of integration it means x is between 0 to 2 and then y is between 0 to 2 okay any question by now is there any question by now should i move on do you have any question no huh i move on okay so what what is left is really what is my my integral okay so my integral is just as i said is the surface the roof the pink one okay so the pink one here was just the paraboloid thing which the equation was x squared plus 2y squared plus z equals 16. remember it's right there okay so the the thing that i reminded reminding you about the concept is just telling us z is a function of f of f of x y okay so z has to be a function of uh, x and y so this is moving to the other side that's just really what your integral is 16 minus x square minus 2y square okay so that gives you the volume mm -hmm. that is going to be the volume is it fine any question do you see for this one it doesn't matter to go with dx divide or dy dx is really same thing okay so integration is easy so you have to integrate first the inner one which is going to be 16 uh, in terms of the y is 16 y minus x square y minus 2 y cube divided by 3 is it okay do you agree so i'm doing in terms of the y x is a constant so this is just really what i can get and then i need to plug in for the zero i'm fine for the zero i'm fine because it's just everything multiplied by zero is zero but i need to plug in the y value to be two so this is two 
minus x square, this is two, and then minus two third, this is two, and then dx, okay? So then this is going to be 32 minus two x square, and this is six, two times, two times two is 16 divided by three, and then you integrate in terms of the x, okay? So 32 x minus two third of x cubed minus 16 divided by three of x when you plug in zero and two. Again, I'm not worried about the two. Sorry, I'm not worried about the zero because that's just really zero, but I plug in two. Okay. So the answer was 48. Actually, we have had it somewhere in the slide. I can just come back to see whether I have it here, but I knew we have it in the slide. Uh, no, it's not here. It's in the PowerPoints. And then I forgot to make it PDF, so I will have a different things because I forgot to make it PDF, okay. Any question about any of these steps? Graphing, set the limits of integration, and then evaluate it. Is there any question? Is there any question? Move on. Okay. Uh, so that was just really the basic, basic uh, type of uh, what is double integration. When I call them basic, because it was just rectangular region, because if you have had only uh, uh, numbers for the limits of integration. But uh, that's not always true, right? So we might get the variables to the limits of integration, not only numbers. Mm. Let me go back to the first page. Okay. Let's just stop for one minute. So this is 44. I can stop for about three minutes. Is that fine? This is stop for three minutes before starting the new section. So this is three minutes break. This is a three minutes break for you. If you need to do something, make sure I pause. Okay. When, oops, I stopped something. Stop sharing, okay? Uh, so, uh, anyway, we can't count on these videos, but I, if, if it's, it was recording at the beginning, uh, but if you see that sign, which is, I don't see it in my side, I don't know why, when I am here, I am right here, I see it, okay? But when I just go to the sharing thing, I don't see something is recording. So that's one of the things that I just need to ask you, please check for me, always, uh, is that icon of recording is there, then at least you have that recording thing. But as long as this is uh, during the class time and you can make the class time, so you should be fine. You know, you have two sets of the videos online. So this is the through the Zoom. I will provide it for you as long as I can get it through the cloud and that's just from the campus. And then the other one is just for extra problem, extra helps. If you feel you need more extra problem, more ex extra help, so you just go and watch the other types of video, which is on the, the blackboard. Mm. Still shows it's recording on our end, Professor. I hope. Okay, so the, then again, one more time, if I go to the, you know, when it's recording, we, I don't get the link right away. Usually it takes a few hours uh, to just put it in cloud and let me know this is just recording somewhere and then I will get a link through the Zoom. This is already recorded, okay? So then I, I hope I will get it after a few hours and then I can share with you. And uh, again, uh, remember there are two sets of videos over here. So these videos are still, uh, this video is still is there. Oh, this is 2250. So it's the other course. Mm. Uh, so the, if I go to the to your course, 
uh, the place that I put the lecture, lecture notes is going to be here. So I will add uh, one more file here. So uh, I was planning to put the Zoom recorded meeting over here. The videos is here, the lectures is here. So I just post uh, after each class the lecture notes that I have uh, had during the, the, the Zoom and then the, um, the video right over here on your Blackboard. So again, if I go to the course content, and then this is just really whatever week is. So is it just week 10, sorry, week nine, uh, which I need to change all of them, okay? So there are some other videos over there. there are, those are available for you too. So you can, you can have them for extra help. So if you need extra problems, extra help, so you can just have them, okay? But uh, this is just something extra. Otherwise, if you are here during the class time, you should be fine. Any other question for me? Is there any other question for me? Professor, what's the um, what's the midterm covering up to? What section? Um, we have plenty of sections, am I right? We have Maybe. started from, it should be starting from 14.3 which is partial derivatives and ending by today, 15.2. Okay, did we did we finish, or we're gonna finish 15.2 on Monday and then the midterm is mm -hmm. gonna be on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. We're almost done. I mean, that's just really extra practicing problems, okay? Okay. Okay, but our midterm is on Wednesday of next week or Monday? Mm, Wednesday, it's 25th. Okay. okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? So I have changed the group work number eight to be on, uh, I don't remember. I remember I changed it, but I don't remember when. Uh, so it's not tonight, right? I don't know, I should check it. I think I give you extra time because I forgot to, set, to, to put the uh, problems over there. And group work number nine probably is 25th, means the next Wednesday, if we could cover 12, I mean 15.3, if we couldn't start 15.3 or finish it, so then we need to get extension for that. But I need to change the homework. Any other question? Will you make an announcement when you change the due date and stuff? Mm. Usually, yes. <laughs> In typical days, you will always get the checklist for week. I need time to gather everything to just make it uh, changes, okay? So what was, uh, I will try, okay? Uh, I will try to give you, this is changing, this is changing, right? For now, uh, because I forgot about, I think I've done the changes as of now. So whatever was due day, I have changed it, but I, for, for the my math lab thing, I forgot totally about it. And then pretty much everything is, is changing because we are really doing slowly on this Zoom. It's, it's fine, we have time. We are not worried about the time, but it's just really changing all the due dates. Okay, so. Uh, I don't see the due dates. So this is the due dates of 15 point, uh, to is 23rd, huh? Which one I need to change guys, do you know? I see the 15.3 is to any third or whatever it is, all of them are really pushing back. But are you okay for 14.7, 14.8? You have done those, those things? So those are already past you, right? I, I think we covered those in time. last I, week. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, I think we all did that. So which one I need to change? Just the one that's due this Monday. I think it needs to get pushed back uh, probably till the following month or just a later date. I, 
since we're doing it on Mondays, probably the next week. Mm, okay, 23rd, let's just say the same. Uh, 23rd, so just 15, huh? So this one, I have to move it back for now, 30th. And I don't think we can do any of this. Okay. Uh, but it's just really weekly. I have no plan for the rest of them. Okay, I will change two by two. If you don't mind, because I do not know what's going on in next next classes. So I can't change more than so this as as long as I did not cover during the class time, so you are good. But that's John to remember to remind me. Okay. Check. Yeah, I'll I'll update you weekly depending on where, where mm -hmm. we've gotten to and needs to get. Yeah, because I'm not going to change it and later we, we will uh change it again and again. That's just Uh, why it doesn't show me so for now i have changed the first two sections that's supposed to be 15.3 and 4 to be the following monday uh, but that's just really temporary okay so what you need to do is just finish the homework by the end of 15.2 which is the test and then uh, for most likely i have to change those days too because i think it's just a spring break am i right or no uh, 30th of the March is the spring break? Yeah. Do we have the, a spring break? Through the fourth. Yes, we do. The, the, still keeping the break as break, huh? So the yeah. campus wide, I, I, I haven't checked that thing. So it's the campus wide is just one. So that means that 30th that I have moved right now, that doesn't make sense too, because that's a break. I have to push it all the way to the April. Okay. Is there any other question or comment for me? You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So this is, uh, I'll end the, the meeting. If you have had any question or any individual office hours, you can always request. We will make it through the Zoom. Okay. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Professor. Bye. Bye. Okay. Have a good weekend, guys.